welcome to this week's piece. So I picked this one up from one of my husband's friends. It's essentially broken in half. None of the drawers are working or functioning. <laughs> They're just, oh, it's, it's good. Um, however, it was originally made incredibly well. And you guys know I can't bear to see these old ones not live their best life. So we're going to fix it up. That piece of wood in there, she told me that it, all the parts were to it. That doesn't go to it anywhere, <laughs> which I thought was amusing. But it was great because now I have an extra piece of oak in my shop. The finish was in pretty rough condition. Um, like I said, it's, it's pretty old, so... It's to be expected. There were some additional pieces on here at some point. I have no idea. I tried looking this up. It was so, I couldn't find anything. It's just, it's a really cool piece and I couldn't find anything exactly like it. This is not the original hardware. Obviously there's multiple other hardware holes. So nothing actually went all the way through. So they used the old screw method. And then the dovetails are hand cut, but there is some machine work on this too. So again, that kind of hinders dating a little bit. So to start, I'm going to take everything out, remove all, you can see just the drawer slide, they, ju they just fell down. <laughs> There's nothing, the bottom is broken out and the sides are completely split in half. So I'm just going to remove everything and assess everything and figure out what I need to do. As I'm going along, I have my blue tape out. I do this for any old pieces that I'm taking things off. I want them all to go in the exact same spot that I took them from. So I make markings on them and make sure I get them put in the exact same spot because a lot of times they were cut to fit exactly right. It wasn't done in measurements. It was done, this one fits exactly here and will not fit anywhere else. So you want everything to work smoothly when you go to put it back together. So marking everything is a great way to ensure that that happens. Alright, so what I'm thinking here is this is connected to this. It's joined really well. Um, it's not even a little bit loose and it's the same on the other side. So here to here and then the backs are also the joints are really, really strong back here. And then the top is really, really strong too. The only issue I'm having is the split down the middle of either side. And then of course, this bottom piece is down and it needs to be re-glued. So what I have to figure out is, can I, I mean, obviously I can glue this piece back up and get it structurally fine because once that's in it'll brace this but I'm hoping that I can get this back together I'm going to guess that I can't because I think that there's been some shrinkage over time and there might just be a gap there but we'll see I'll try and get this in we'll do some dry clamping and see how close I can get these put together and I don't know guys, but I, I really, I don't want to take this apart. And again, if it's because the drawer, the wood shrank, then taking that apart isn't going to do anything anyways. It's, I'm missing this. So I don't know, maybe I'll have to throw in a splice there, like a really thin shim, possibly do that, or if the crack's not too big after I get it all together, maybe I'll leave it because it, I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking on it. I'm trying to figure out what, how I want to go about it. But again, I'm going to get this up, dry clamp it, and then see, see how close we get this together. I also need to clear out these uh, old spideys.
So I'm going through and removing any random nails that were put in. There were a lot of random nails that weren't actually doing anything anymore. I'm not ever sure if they were at one point in time. And then I've got my scraper out and I'm scraping off all of the old glue. It was assembled with hide glue. So that is what I'm going to continue to use throughout the process, which is why you guys heard the heat gun on because I had to heat up my hide glue. And then I'm going to dry clamp everything to place. Now, I don't have any clamps that are long enough for this. I used to work out of my house and my father-in-law has a lot of really, really long clamps, so I always used his. Um, so for right now, I'm going to clamp this overnight, uh, interestingly, with the multiple clamps <laughs> hooked together, um, just to let it sit overnight until I can bring in some longer clamps from, like I said, my father-in-law, because I just steal stuff from him whenever I need to. <laughs> Now that the bottom portion is handled, I'm going to, of course, disassemble at the top. And that's just taking every single thing apart because we're going to completely strip this back and then give it a new look. And these hardware bits were just, they were super loose. Nothing was tightened, but the screws were in really, really tight, just not all the way. It was very interesting. <laughs> so I removed those. The screws themselves wanted to strip out. So I just lifted them out as much as I could. And then I used my pliers to unscrew them the rest of the way. I'm not going to be reusing these screws at all. So I wasn't worried about just getting rid of them. And this is a great candidate for scraping. It, the finish comes off really, really easily and it goes much faster than sanding. Of course you have to sand when you're finished, but it takes it back to bare wood a lot faster. And that means I don't have to use stripper, which is just a mess to clean up, so. And I get to use my mini scraper, which was from Emily from Reconstructing Emily. That girl's awesome. This is my 5K gift that she sent to me, which just warms my heart. So I use this so much because there was a ton of curves on this that I actually needed to use multiple blades for. So I was very thankful to have this. And as you can see, I'm also using it to scrape off the old glue on the drawer runners. Sanding was very easy. I just went in with a 220 and just kind of cleaned up the finish. You can see right here all of the different types of hardware this thing has had over the years. Now I'm going to be using a little bit of wood filler, but just on the hardware holes. I didn't use this really to fill out anything else, any dings or anything, because I feel like it just gives these pieces added charm and you kind of get to see their history, which I enjoy. So while I'm filling these, um, I'm not going to perfectly conceal them, but just kind of let them set back so that they're not so in your face, like right here. But I do like to keep, you know, a little bit of the scratches and dings and things like that. This piece is old, like I just, I wanna keep that. And more scraping, you're going to see a lot of this cause there was a lot to scrape. As I said, I went and picked up some longer clamps from my father-in-law so I can actually get this thing glued up now. I'm using hide glue, I already mentioned that, but this is supposed to be a hide glue that you do not have to heat up. 
However, my shop is very chilly, so I do warm it up with my heat gun and it just kind of loosens it and makes it a little more mobile, if you will. So I spread that along everywhere that it needs to go. The piece is kind of doing a good job going where it needs to go because like I said, we've had it dry clamped overnight, so that helps quite a bit. And then I'll get everything put into place, get it clamped up and then leave it overnight again. Anywhere that I saw missing glue blocks, I just went ahead and cleaned up the areas and then added some new glue blocks to give it the extra support. These were over the split, so obviously those ones were missing because that's where the wood shrank, which obviously pulled away from the glue blocks, yada yada. So I'm just replacing those and it'll be good as new. So for this area in particular, on the top of the mirror, it had just lots of curves and lines that you couldn't just do with a regular scraper. So that's where this thing really came in handy. And I used a ton of the heads on this. Just, I had to get all that finish off and make sure that it was clean and neat because you can't really put a sander in there. So you have to do as much as you can by scraper and then everything else will be sanding by hand. Now the flowers that were carved into the upper sides, I obviously don't want to use a scraper on those. The background isn't even smooth. It's kind of a pebbly finish. So this is the one area I did use stripper on and I just put it on, let it sit the allotted time. I wiped it back with the shop towel and then I went in and cleaned it up with mineral spirits. When I did this with the mineral spirits, I did make sure to go over the entirety of the board because I don't like using just one substance on one part of one board. You'll see differences in color and things like that. So it's best just even though I didn't strip over the entire piece, just to take this and run this along the entire board length so that everything looked cohesive at the end. Now that the glue has sat overnight, it is time to take off all of the clamps and make sure that we did a good enough job. Did I mention there was a lot of scraping in this video? Just, just some scraping and more scraping and more scraping, but it does go much, much faster than any of the other processes I could have used, so I was thankful for that. Now the locks, I wasn't sure if they worked or not, but I really, really wanted them to, so I went through a bunch of my old keys and tried to find one that would fit. 
when I'm doing this, I try and pay attention to the way it feels when the key goes in and I listen for things and you can kind of watch the top area of the latch try and struggle to move if they're stuck. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just making sure that I can find a key that works similarly on all of them and then I can just use that and sell the piece with a working key. Now, as I'm doing this, I found a key that would work. However, none of the locks wanted to actually work. So I had to, of course, figure that out. WD-40 is my general go-to at first so that I don't have to remove anything and see if I can get it to work this way. So I went through, just sprayed a little on there and then let them sit for a while just so that I could work into everything and, and see if I couldn't get them to function. When that didn't work, I just had to take out the lock and see what was going on. This way you can kind of pull it out and generally in these older pieces, the mechanisms aren't very complicated, but they just need a good cleaning. So that's essentially what I did. And then I could kind of mess with the key and watch where everything turned to kind of help me figure out what I needed to do. And it really just needed the clean. So there wasn't anything crazy with this one, thank goodness. This was a little finicky to get it back down and in, but once all the lubrication kind of got moved around in there, they work like a charm. So that's awesome. Now, putting in the drawer runners was fairly easy once I figured out what was wrong. Again, lots of the wood had shrank and things just weren't fitting the way that it should have. So I notched out a piece in the back to help this fit flush against the wood, which was the main issue is that it had popped off and it had nothing to stick to. Um, originally, I think it was done with just glue and then somewhere along the line, they had put in these um, large, large nails. So I removed the large nails because they weren't doing anything anyways. And then we'll re-glue these in now that it will fit flush against the side and that will also provide structure to the dresser. And there's already a some markings on the inside where I can see where it's supposed to line up level. So that worked out in my favor. I didn't have to do a ton of measuring or anything like that. They were kind of already marked out. Again, I just used the pencil to mark where I needed to notch out the end where I needed to cut out the piece on the back side. And then I can glue these in and then I'm actually just going to use my airstrike to just really secure these in while we're waiting for the glue to dry. And then I'm finishing up with the last bit of my sanding. There was Quite a bit of this, but as I said, much less than had I decided to sand everything back down to wood. Scraping really, really takes the vast majority of it off. So this is just kind of finishing it up and making it look polished and preparing it for the stain. Now the stain I'm using is one that I picked up. It is a poly stain combination. I wanted to go white to lighten it up, but I'm going to add a couple pigments in to give it a little bit of a purple hue. And this is going to combat the yellowing that the stain will eventually get over time and also the yellow in the wood. So it'll give it kind of a fresh, very feminine look and also do double duty in combating the yellow that's later on. And it just, I feel like it's a more updated color. Now, this stuff 
oh man i don't know i really really want to like it i've tried it on another piece as well not the same color but a different one because this one was just it's so weird it's a weird texture it's a weird feel like when you're painting it on they say to use a synthetic brush which i obviously did because anytime i'm starting to use something i try and do what they tell me to and then from there i will go on and make adjustments to how i feel like it would actually work better i'm not sure anything would work but it's just it's a very weird product i as of right now do not recommend it i can't say that that won't change maybe if i play with it a little more and see how i feel about it but man it's just interesting and i wish i would have just done one of my normal maybe a wash or something and then sealed over it with my water-based chalk mountain satin poly because i feel like it would have given me a similar look without all of the work that this caused me so like i said right now i don't recommend this product it, the finished result looks lovely so i can't complain about that it's just it gave me a lot of hassles going through it I let this dry overnight and then I went back in with a 320 sanding grit just to take off any nits or anything that got stuck in the finish overnight while it was sitting. And then I went back in with my second coat. This, this coat is where I decided I just not excited about it. So I did the second coat and it would actually reactivate the first coat, but only in certain sections and make it kind of wonky. So I had to play with it a lot and do a lot of, it just, oh man, I feel like every turn this whole piece just kept slamming me down <laughs> and it took so much longer than anything I've ever worked on. I felt just like everything kept being like, nope, 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 try again. So I did and it's fine now, but wow. I mean, even the hardware, I ordered these bail pulls um, because they were just the screw in kind. They weren't the bolts that run all the way through the dresser drawers because that's what was originally on the piece and I wanted to stay true to that. So I got these. I had four of the screws just strip out the heads and broke them off as I was going. So that was fairly annoying. And then I had to go through and I just grabbed some of my screws that I had on hand that did not match. And I used those instead because they were stronger and could go into oak with no issue. And so I did those and then I painted them to match because they, they have to match, obviously. I cannot tell you how exciting this part was for me because it meant I could put everything together and then I just needed to do finishing touches. So I could put all the screws back, get the top put on, have it look at least moderately good for a start, and then I could go in and clean up the spots that still needed a little extra stain, like I added a little stain to the bottom of those so that they weren't so stark, even though you'll never see the underside of them. I still needed that done because I just have mild OCD. So I got them put on, got to finish up all the finishing touches, and oh man, I was so, so excited to do that part.
Then for a little fans on the drawer sides, again, I wanted to keep everything else kind of wood toned. I know this is a very light and it's still kind of a colored, but you can still see all of the wood grain through it. So I wanted to add just a little bit of my fanciness to it without being over the top like most of my pieces are. Um, anytime I refinish a piece like this, I usually want to keep it as close to where I think it should be. I know that that doesn't make a lot of sense, but I just, I don't want to put paint over stuff like this. So I'm adding a tiny bit of paint in the stencils on the side of the drawers just to give it a little bit of fans. And then I used that same color and added just a little bit of dry brushing over the carvings on the sides just to help them pop out a little bit more. Then the stencil portions and the dry brush portions were sealed with Talk Mountain's orange scented wax. And then I also did all of the drawer glides and freshened up the drawers with this as well because they were obviously a bit dehydrated. Like I said, I'm going to take a bit of time and clean up all the areas where I felt like it just needed a little more finish and clean those up so that the whole piece looks just pristine. Oh hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and we finally have a finished piece. This one, oh man, took so long. Usually it takes me about a week to do a piece. Usually I can get about a piece and a half done in my working week. That's the typical I can expect, which is why I get videos out to you about once a week on Tuesdays. But this one was not having it. So it's very old. Um, it was extremely hard to date because there's the hand cut dovetails, but then kind of newer screws, like all throughout, they're old screws, but newer than, um, when you typically see the hand cut dovetail like there's just a lot and there was a, a bunch of repairs too to kind of jumble things up so it's interesting it's old but probably not terribly old anyways it was lovely i adored it the finish was a little bit rough so we redid the finish obviously made all the repairs that needed to be made i was trying to stick with um similar style hardware so instead of drilling all the way through the drawers, they use mini screws on this style. So I wanted to kind of keep that. Then of course, you guys know all the screws were just everything. The locks didn't work, but we fixed all the locks and they now work. So that's exciting. I mean, she just has had a complete overhaul and she's lovely now, just so pretty and fresh. So she still has kind of that antique feel, but is a little bit more fresh and modern. You can still see all the wood grain, um, but just liked it. And then of course we did the hint of purple um, to kind of combat all the yellows and everything. So it'll keep it really bright and fresh for years and years to come. So that's kind of why I did that route and it made it just a little more feminine too. Um, I imagine this will go to a woman. It doesn't, it's not a very masculine piece. Um, so, Kind of when I look at a piece of furniture, I try and think who's my buyer and who could it, you know, potentially go to. So that's stuff that I always think about when I'm designing them as well. Unless it's just one that I think is fun. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys like this. I'll get you some pictures and all that stuff coming up after this. You guys are so wonderful. We are at 7,000. I think that's so awesome. 7,000 humans. You guys are just the best. Um, thank you so much for all of those who like and subscribe and share and all that stuff. You guys are awesome and buy me coffees and oh my goodness, I've had so many Amazon wish li Like, I can't tell you. I'll get to my door, I'm like, I didn't order anything and there is an Amazon package for me and I can't tell you how just incredibly amazing that is from just that you guys support me in so many different ways. I truly, truly adore you. So thanks so much and I'll see you next week.